Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. It's late October 2023 and some really important features have been added to the Hornet, all based around the data link that will give you new abilities for air to air and new abilities for air to ground. We're going to show it all off in multiplayer because I think that's where it's most important but everything here will also be relevant to single player. So first, the scenario. We've got three aircraft, a Hornet there, a Hornet there and an F-16. We've got an F-16 in today because we want to show that regards to this data link sharing, it works between platforms, F-16s and F-18s and in the future, probably other aircraft as well. We have a hostile aircraft coming towards us at just over 100 miles. It's a bomber and other than that, it's a non-factor. Let's have a closer look at how I've set these aircraft up. Here is me. The video today will all be done from my cockpit. My group name is Cap. I am a group, but I'm just a single aircraft in that group. My pilot name is Cap-1. Over here, we have Poosh. He's also in an F-18. He's pilot Poosh-1. And finally, over here, we have Simba. Uh, he is Simba-1. So let's start with the new data link stuff. I'm going to click on my aircraft here. We have a new tab here called data links, which we'll come to in a minute. But first, we have new options in this, the aircraft additional properties. For the Hornet, we have three data link boxes here. These represent how this aircraft is going to be represented on the data link. The data link in DCS is known currently as TNDL, by the way. So first, we have a voice call sign label which is two letters and followed by a voice call sign number which is two numbers. You can change these to anything you want but once you place the aircraft in the mission editor they will automatically be generated and incremented. So what I'm saying is they're fine as they are but if you want you can come in and change them. I have changed mine to CA just for cap and then 11 just for 11. Then there's the STN. This is our system track number. This is our unique identification number on the data link. Again, it's automatically generated when you add the aircraft in Mission Editor and it will automatically increment and deconflict, but you can change it if you want. If you're going to change it, you must make sure that you don't conflict it with another aircraft with that number. So make sure each aircraft has a separate STN. Like I said, though, it should be done automatically when placing the aircraft next onto data links tab. In fact, before we do that, let me just show that the other aircraft also have these additional properties. So Poosh, I've set to PO11 and he's 00206. And Simba is SI11 00205. Right, back to me. This is where the magic happens, onto the data links tab. We have two sub tabs in here, settings, which is not really relevant at the moment, and network. In the data link, we have two elements, and it's important to understand the difference between them. One is a member, known as a flight team member. The second is a donor, or a donator, I'll probably call them. Donors have less rights than a member. A donor can share aerial contact information. He cannot share aerial target information, so he can share to the data link what he sees, but not what he is targeting. The member, in terms of air-to-air, -air, can share what he sees, but also what he's targeting. That's the main difference. We can add other aircraft in the mission to our members list here. They will be members. And to our donators list here. This is all relevant to other aircraft like the F-16, like the A-10, like the AH-64 as well. But each of those aircraft has a set limit of how many members and donators they can have. An F-18 can have a maximum of four members and eight donators. So, in my members list so far, all I have is me. In my donators or donors, I have nothing. Why don't we start first with donors? I can add them by looking at the group here and adding the whole group. If the group had more than just one plane, it would add the whole group or I can add just one aircraft from a particular group. In this case, both this and this group only have one plane, so it's not going to make any difference. So let's add Simba group and Poosh. Let's add Poosh group. I can get rid of them like that and then add them back in. When they're added in, we obviously see their STN that we saw earlier, their, their data link call sign that we saw earlier, the actual pilot name and their number on my list. 
So what we've got now is a scenario where Simba and Poosh can share their aerial contact information, what they can see, but not what they can target to me. Note that is not reciprocated. If I wanted to be able to share what I see with them, I would need to go and set the same thing up. I would need to go into Simba here. I would need to go into Data Link, and I would need to reciprocate and set me up in his pages. But I'm not going to do that. They're just going to give to me today to keep it super simple. Right, so let's just save that over whatever mission file we've got here and go and run that in multiplayer. Welcome in viewers. So I've got my donators push over to the side or donors. I've got Simba in an F16 over to the right. Simba just reminded me of something very important. If you create a group or a flight, same thing, in the mission editor with more than one aircraft in it and assuming that I'm the lead of that flight then those other flight members will automatically be added to that member list so you don't need to do it manually right guys um there's a bad guy in front of us 100 miles um I'm going to unpause right I've got to set my plane up first viewers I've turned the sound off because I'm struggling at the moment autopilot barometric hold on data links must be on for all everyone here obviously so data link uh, page one on data link page two is already on because we've done an air start okay uh, my radar is off very important I don't see the bad guy I just want information from my boys um, I am going to go to my SA page here uh, and that's pretty much all I want zoom out right um, Poosh oh he's already found one Poosh has the most powerful radar here Poosh confirm that you can already see a bad guy or uh, you, a contact yeah bogey about 352 for 100 Right, so I'm just going to pause it there. So viewers, um, that is my donor Poosh. That is my donor Simba. We know they're donors because they have that little dot on their left-hand side. They can see what we know is a bad guy. It's ambiguous, but we know it's a bad guy up there, 100 and something miles. And it also shows on my radar, but it's not. But I'm not seeing it. It's just come through the data link um, and because I've got my radar silenced. Poosh, would you please lock that target and let's see what happens. Lock. Right, and it's no different because he's a donor only. He's not a member. We don't see anything when he's locked. Uh, right, that's you done, I think, uh, Poosh. Can you please exit? Just go back to spectators and let's let everything just depopulate. I'm out. All right. Uh, it will take everything on the data link takes a few seconds, so we're going to have to wait, and eventually it will depopulate. Okay, so uh, Poosh is gone now. Uh, eventually, the and there you go. The hostiles depopulated. Why can't Simba see it? He's got a much smaller radar with less range. Simba, when you're ready, can you please turn your radar on and just look for the bad guy? Radar is on, and I can see a target. All right, that will come through hopefully soon, viewers, uh, as ever. It, uh, there he goes. Uh, Simba can now see the target. Can uh, you please try locking the target now? And um, I'll show that again. Nothing will change. Target is locked. All right, viewers. So that, I'm going to pause it there. That shows you what happens when two donors, uh, one an F-18, one an F-16, see a bad guy or uh, a contact, and when they lock. Right, next, we're going to change them to members, which we can actually do in the cockpit, but we'll do it later. We will just want to do this step by step. Right, let's uh, move my guys. So I'll click on me, click on data links. That move, let's move them from donors. So delete, delete, and let's add them here to members. They are now members and they will transmit to me that save that over the mission again and go and try again right i've got my two members in push left simba right unpause guys uh right i just need to set myself up so uh, barometric hold data link on data link two is already on uh silence my radar uh sa page zoom it out that's me set up push um when you're in range can you please Find the target and lock him as soon as you can, please. Oh, and you can tell their members now, viewers, because they've got the donor dot and they've got the member letter. Target's locked. All right, uh, there you go. Uh, he's transmitting the target information to me and we can tell he's locking. Simba, I know you're probably not in range yet, but when you are in range, please turn your radar on, find the baddie and lock him. There we go. Roger. And there is Simba locking the bandit. Uh, right, next we're going to run a similar scenario, but I'm going to add an extra member to our members group. Right, I just want to, just for a bit of fun viewers, add an extra guy in Dark's just turned up. So we're going to add Dark in Dark there. His name is going to be Dark1. He's on his date link, going to be DA11. He's not going to link to me, but I'm going to, well, sorry, he is going to link to me. Uh, so I'm going to go back to me. I'm going to go to data links. I'm going to add him as 
a member. We've now got three members. Let's save that. Welcome in viewers. I now have my three members. I'm pausing. Guys, you got one job, which is to find the baddie, lock the baddie, and just uh, keep in that, please. Viewers, let's set up as usual. Let's turn that on. Let's turn our data link on. Second data link is on. This time, an extra step. We're going to go. Let's turn my radar off. Don't want to pollute the results. So this time, I'm going into our HSI because I just want to set up a bullseye for us. So if I can remember waypoint one, data, uh, waypoint one is now a bullseye. Get rid of that into the SA page. Right, now this is super cool. What we're going to show now is the fact that we can add these guys in our data link as members, as donators, or remove them completely here. So let me just get that sorted. Right, the guys are busy locking and doing stuff. There is Poosh, there is Dark, there is Simba. They're busy doing their things. Um, if I go step, I can step through the contacts, including friendlies, on the SA page. Obviously, I don't want the baddies, so I'm going to go to my guys. Right, that is... It's hard to tell which one you've got boxed, but that is Simba because it's an F-16. It's Simba 1-1. It's 7.2 thousand feet. From me, he's 072 for 15 miles. From our bullseye, we just set he's 164 for 173. I can step through the other boys like that. Um, once I've got one of the friendlies selected, I can. you can see he's set as member two. Well, I don't like Simba anymore, and I'm going to get rid of him as a member. So off you go, Simba, bye. I'm now going to make him donator one, though, and he's now a donator, which you can see. So we can now send contact information, but not target information. I'm now going to remove him from donator. He's now longer, no longer donating to me. Um, so he can't give anything to me. Uh, what about, I'm going to put him back in as a member. Uh, what about uh, Dark? Dark's been annoying me lately. He is a member four. You're no longer a member, but you are a donator. In fact, no, you're nothing. And so on. So that's how I can specify who is a donator, who is a member, and who is nothing. Why is that important? Well, if you're in a technical battlefield with 20, 30, 40 friendly planes in the vicinity, it will be a nightmare. So much information will be whizzing about most of it, or a lot of it you won't want, especially if you're on a completely different mission. So here's where you specify what information you want and from whom. A uh, very similar thing in the uh, F-16, obviously, but just operated a bit differently. Uh, that shows how you control that from the cockpit. Next, let's look at some very interesting air to ground. Uh, viewers, just something the boys have reminded me to add. If I do unpause now, if I turn my radar on, let it find the baddie. There it is. There's a brick. Uh, make it soy. Oh, get the guy. Lock him. If I were to lock him like that, notice that uh, we've got the diamond saying that it's a con it's a target and it's a hostile. Notice also that there is a little hat that appears above it there. Uh, and that is telling you that there is one or more other guys, friendlies, that are locking uh, and correlating that target. Welcome in. If you like that, you're going to love this, viewers. We have the ability to share ground target information in the form of a speed sensor point of interest. First, how have we set it up? Uh, well, I haven't really set it up at all. What we've got is myself, F-18, Dark, F-18, Push, F-18, and of course, Simba, F-16. I've not set any data link stuff up, so they're not members, they're not donors. So the first thing I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to unpause. I'm going to set my jet up. You guys, uh, Basically, just do nothing until I need you, please, just to orbit. Right, so autopilot, barometric hold. I'm going to make sure my data links are on. That one's on, and that one's on. I'm going to need my FLIR here. FLIR, go. I'm going to need air to ground mode, which, whoops, and um, FLIR again. Radar can stay on the right if it wants. Uh, SA page here, so SA. Uh, we can maybe zoom in a bit. Right, I need to set my guys up as members if they're going to sh send information to me. So, step, that is Dark, uh, member two. Step, Simba, member three. Poosh, member four. Right, I'm ready to receive information from you guys. Poosh, can you please designate a speed or a, a ground target at your steer point and let me know when it's designated. I've just got to keep an eye on my speed viewers to make sure I don't crash the plane. Designated. Right, so we should see a speed appear here soon, viewers. Uh, it's going to take a little while because everything does on... There it is. There's his speed. Okay. Uh, Simba and Dark, why not? Please find your targets and designate 
those speeds, darks will go ultimate. There's the boys. They've all got their, their speeds there. Right, now, how do I convert that into something I can bomb? Well, there's two ways. One, I can use the SA page through via the T-Pod. So, T-Pod, we need to make this soy or sensor of interest, and I'll do that with sensor control switch left. Pip. And I will now use my TDC to drive it about left, right, up, and down. And all I've got to do on my SA page is find where my T-Pod is looking there and put it on or near one of those speeds which is easier said than done. Over here, maybe IR mode. Right, push. Um, can you confirm that your target, if I can remember how to zoom, which I can't, there we go, is like a long sausage-shaped white thing? Yes, sir. Right, and then you, you use the T-Pod. Normally, you get an area track, designate a target, go and drop a bomb on it. All right, um, let's find the other way that I could have done that. Uh, check I'm in air to ground mode, and I am. I need to turn my Hemex on my helmet mounted display. Zip, let it warm up. Oh, by the way, when you are um, looking around with your Hemex on, you can see that that is a friendly. He's a member because he's D. He's designating a speed because he's got an asterisk, and that's his altitude. Pretty cool, huh? Right, um, so with my Hemex on, if I were to look, ah, oh, there's the speed that distance away from me. Super cool, right? Um, now, if I were to make that speed, uh, sorry, the helmet soy, and I do that, making sure I've not got a target designated, and I've not, I press sensor control switch forward once, and I've got this thing that comes up, and in here, I've got a dot in the velocity vector, right? Now, all I've got to do is move the, the thing on the thing, press TDC depress, as accurate as you can, and whoop, I've got my own speed targeted from Poosh's speed, and that's now fully targeted. I could literally, uh, well, run in and drop a bomb on that, guys. So that's them sending info to me. How would we do it the other way around? Well, they would need to add me as members, which we've shown how to do that. In an F-18, it's all automatic. As long as I've got TX, DSG, whatever that stands for, I can't remember, boxed here, then I'm now broadcasting my speed to them. Simba is a little different. He has to push his manually because F-16, but that's for another day. Guys, that shows how in air to ground, I can. you guys can share your speeds and I can share my speed to you. Two ways that I can convert your speed into my speed and go and drop a, a doodah on it. Anything to add from the Hornet's point of view? Um, no. Yeah, that's really useful. I can't overstate how useful that is, especially multiplayer. That is just so useful. I hope you enjoyed that and bye-bye.